The following presentation is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Radio from the heart of America now. And now, the Commander in Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. Well, folks, we do welcome you to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops on this Friday, August the 25th uh, broadcast. And you will notice immediately that I am not Carl Gallops, but I am Brandon Gallops, and I do appreciate the honor of being able to fill in today to be able to sit in here in the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio and to be able to fill in uh, for my father, who is emotional work for his newest book that will be coming out in October, uh, Gods and Thrones, Gods and Thrones. You will be able, you can order that now on Amazon.com. It's available for pre-order, and the official release date is October the 1st. If you order uh, now on Amazon, you typically will get that a week or two before the official release date. I have read it, uh, was privileged to help do some research for the book, and I think you will be astounded uh, as you read and uncover and see things from possibly a new perspective of what is unfolding in our world, why it is unfolding the way it is, and exactly what is behind all of what we perceive to be the madness of today's world. Well, folks, thank you for tuning in today. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. we got a great show lined up for you today, and I don't want to waste any time getting to our first guest uh, because I have joining me all the way from Israel, a great friend to Freedom Friday and our Israeli correspondent, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. You can find Zev at messiahofisraelministries.org, messiahofisraelministries.org. I had the great pleasure and privilege for the first time last weekend of meeting Zev face to face. As a matter of fact, uh, it was the first time that my dad or I, either one, have met Zev face to face after years of having him on this radio program, of doing interviews with him, of doing ministry together via the internet, and of Zev and my dad teaming up uh, and using uh, one of my uh, my father's uh, other books, the Rabbi Who Found Messiah for is for ministry work in Israel and ministering to the Jews. We finally had the great pleasure and privilege of sitting down face to face, shaking hands, hugging necks, sharing meals together. What a great, great time we had with Zev and his wonderful wife. So, Zev, welcome to Freedom Friday. Shalom, Brandon. A blessing to be here. Thank you so much for taking time out. So I know you told me before we came on air, it's just, just past midnight in Israel. Just past midnight, so I can say good morning. That's right, that's right. Well, good morning to you, my brother. And listen, we do thank you for the sacrifice that you make from time to time to stay up all hours of the night to be a part of Freedom Friday. And uh, listen, I'm glad that you made it home uh, safely from the Hear the Watchman conference in Boise, where we had a great time together last weekend. Uh, you and I uh, were both flying during the eclipse, and I'm assuming that we're talking right now. Neither one of us were raptured. We're still here in a Alive and well. I'm glad to hear that. Absolutely, Brandon. And uh, yeah, we did meet for the first time physically, but in the spirit. We know each other for years. And uh, actually, when we did meet, you, I, uh, your father, and, and Mike Shoesmith, um, we, we felt like we know each other for 20, 30 years. It was amazing, brother. I share the same sentiment. It just, it, it, you know, I've seen your face, obviously. You've seen our faces uh, via the internet and video and things like that. But I would have picked you out of a crowd anywhere, and you were exactly the person that I expected you to be. I mean, we just immediately all bonded in person, and like you said, that's just the gift of the Holy Spirit. Man, we're brothers in Christ, and, and we've been in this work together for some time now, so how awesome is it that God finally worked it out uh, for all of us to be in the same place at the same time? Amen, and we made it through the eclipse together. We did. We made it through the eclipse. And listen, we're joking about that. Um, you know, the eclipse was pretty neat. A, a good friend of mine went up and took his family up into Tennessee uh, and watched it, and he was sharing with me some of the photos that he took during the eclipse. Absolutely amazing, man. The wonders of God. God is amazing. His creation is amazing. And, uh, and, and you know, they talked about how the temperature dropping 20 degrees uh, as the eclipse happened and all of these things. But you know, we had some deep conversation about this, Zev, and, and have continued to. Um, we have all been a little disheartened, I guess maybe the right word, to see how much of the church is putting their faith in 
the eclipse and in the supposed sign of September 23rd. And listen, God is a big God. He can do whatever he wants to do. But Zev, I'm going to pitch this to you, brother. Where do we need to allow our faith to lie? Our faith should lie only in Yeshua HaMashiach and the written word of God that he speaks to us through that written word of God. I would submit to you, Brandon, and to the viewers and listeners around the world, if God wanted us to know a date, he would write the date in the Bible. He's not afraid of us. He's not embarrassed of us. He's not a respecter of persons. And he says in his word, no one knows when he's coming. And in Hebrew, when it says no one, it means no one, Brandon. And if we speculate and start adding dates, then we're adding to the word of God. And, you know, there's a danger in that, and we have to be careful. No, there is a danger. As a matter of fact, some of the closing words of the entirety of the Bible uh, it warn us against doing exactly that, of about taking away from or adding to the Word of God. And so, listen, I agree with you, brother. I am not a date setter. I tell people all the time, if you ever hear me set a date, immediately stop listening to what I have to say and don't listen to anything I have to say in the future because I have slipped into a realm that I don't desire to, <laughs> to walk in. Uh, but listen, you know, that being said, God's Word, I mean, Jesus himself says that we are to be aware of the times we're living in and to know the signs of the time. He listened. He got on to the Pharisees about it. Uh, you know, he said, you can discern the weather, but basically he was saying, here I am, God in the flesh standing in front of you, and you don't even know it. So there is a balance there of knowing and discerning the times that we're living in. And then going all the way to the other extreme, to the extreme of saying, oh my gosh, this, this eclipse is happening and it's an awesome and it's a wonder. This has to mean it's the rapture. This has to mean it's a, a sign of the beginning of the tribulation or, or whatever we're looking for. Uh, and like you said, unless it is spelled out in God's word, we have to be very careful about proclaiming these events to be certain things. Absolutely. And also, I mean, many people can spell things out in the Bible, but they're taking Bible verses out of context. It's yes. very dangerous. When you take a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there and you try to apply it to something that is suitable for you, for what you want to read in the Bible. I mean, Timothy speaks about it. Paul speaks about it. There's going to come a time in the end time where people are going to have itchy ears to hear what they want to hear. And I would submit to you, and you know, w without naming any names or anything, that there are some people out there that have itchy ears and want to hear what they want to hear. But look, in, in Deuteronomy 17, and uh, the context in Deuteronomy 17 God warning not to serve other gods, and it's inter interesting in the Hebrew, uh, maybe even in the English, but I'm reading directly in the Hebrew that it says that it says, um, for instance, God says, for instance, they might serve other gods, worship the sun, the moon, or any of the stars that force uh, the forces of heaven, which I strictly forbid. In Hebrew, the strictly forbid is enlarged. Mm. God is very, very angry. Yes, yes. And listen, I, I think of Jeremiah chapter 10, the first couple of verses. I'm paraphrasing, but God is telling the nation of Israel, listen, don't be like the heathens. Don't be like the pagans. And don't go uh, running around worrying about signs in the heavens. You know, these things are going to happen. So, you know, but Zev, let me ask you a question. Uh, what would you say to the person that says, well, yes, but what about the New Testament writings that talk about uh, signs and wonders in the heavens? And, and because... There will be signs in the end times. We know that uh, again. So, so how, do we, how do we put a biblical balance on that? Well, there will be signs in the end times, but they're going to happen if we're prepared to be priests, to be the bride of Yeshua, meaning the preparation is not for us to start looking up at the moon and the sun and start preparing things. The preparation comes from the heart, and if our heart is right when the time comes, then yes, we'll know. Jesus said, and my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. What does that mean? In the prophetic realm, it also means that we hear, we hear, we see the signs, we hear the, the voice of the shepherd. We prepare ourselves. So yes, there's going to be signs in the end time. But who are we to decide when that, when that time is? Only the King of Kings and Lord of Lords decides when that time is. And when that time is, we're to be prepared. We're not to speculate. We're not to add dates. We're not to make charts. We're not to to do all these things, to, to try to help God, I would submit to you, God doesn't need our help. <laughs> and I would agree 100%. And, and listen, um, I, I would also uh, add to that, and you can agree or disagree, when, 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 when we read of signs and wonders in the heavens in God's Word, uh, in, in my opinion, Zev, you know, things... Whenever God uh, ushers in a sign or uses things like that to usher in specific events in His Word, they are 
first. In other words, it is the first time that something of this, of this magnitude has happened. And the reality is, eclipses happen. They're just a cycle of nature. Uh, constellations move around and they form and reform and, and come. Uh, listen, uh, I, I've heard some, uh, you know, teach and preach that uh, when Jesus, for instance, let, let's take this. When Jesus is on the cross, we know that the sun was darkened from noon until the third hour. That's three hours that God's word says that the sky was black. And I've heard it taught right. that that was an eclipse. Well, okay. Well, I mean... Where does it say in the Bible that it was an eclipse? Thank you I very wonder. much. That, that There you go. We're taking a leap. We're speculating. And not only that, listen, it could have been an eclipse. Okay, God can do what he wants to do. He, he is God. But you can very easily look up uh, on, on NASA and other uh, websites the longest eclipse in history, dating back to 4000 B.C., so the beginning of time as we know it, lasted seven minutes, just over seven minutes, which means that when the Son of God was crucified, God in the flesh, on the cross, that it was something far greater than an eclipse that caused the sky to darken for three solid hours. Maybe God's hand reached out and blocked the sun. Maybe God spoke and told the sun to cease to shine for that amount of time. But in my opinion, we cheapen the Word of God when we try to point to these things and, and say, well, this was just an eclipse. This was just a constellation in the sky. Well, I'm going to be very, very careful to say that anything is an eclipse because I have to answer to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords on Judgment Day. He's going to ask me, where did you see that in the Bible? Who gave you permission, authority yes. to speak things of, of, of my kingdom, of my world, of my my written Word of God and after the Word of God. Who gave you that right? And I don't, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, so I'm going to be careful saying it's an eclipse. I don't know if it was an eclipse. I do know that the Word of God does not mention. No, you are, you are exactly right, Zev. Listen, uh, Zev, we have to take a quick time out, just a short break here, and we'll be back on the other side of it. But I just want to say to people, heed the words that, uh, that Zev and I are speaking now. Not that we are the authority, but put your faith in God's Word. Put your faith in Jesus, who did die on the cross. Let the sun and the moon and the stars do what they may. We'll be back right after this break. Well, folks, welcome back to Freedom Friday. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, this is, in fact, not Carl Gallops. This is Brandon Gallops. I have the great honor and privilege of sitting in the chair today and hosting today's edition of Freedom Friday. And I'm going to waste no time getting right back to the phones with uh, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat joining us from Israel, where it would be shortly after midnight, Israel time. Zev, thank you again so much for being with us today, for taking time out of your night slash early morning to join us. Well, thank you for having me, Brandon. It's always an honor and a blessing. Absolutely. Listen, on the uh, during the first segment, we were kind of talking and joking about the eclipse. You know, there were a lot of eclipse jokes going around last week, and of course, a lot of people went different places to view it. And and listen, amazing, an awesome wonder of God to think that 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 is just a a natural phenomenon that was set in place by God at the beginning of time, and now we get to be here to enjoy that, to 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 marvel at the wonders of creation. We do have to be very careful not to go so far as Romans 1 uh, warns us about worshiping the creation rather than the creator. And uh, so that's kind of what we were talking about during the first segment is, you know, a lot of the church, unfortunately, has, has maybe put their faith in the sun and the moon and the stars and, and, and relying on that. And so, Zev, I'd like to take us all the way back to the book of Genesis, brother, and let you address something because you do speak the Hebrew language. That is your native language, native tongue. And so I'm going to read this in the English, and I'm reading from the NIV version. And could you, uh, could you maybe enlighten us a little bit as to, uh, as to where these words point us? This is Genesis 1.14. It's during the account of creation, and it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You take it, Zev. Genesis 1.14, and again, I'm, I don't know what uh, translations there are in English and other languages. I'm quoting directly from the original Hebrew, and which is biblical Hebrew, a mixture of Aramaic and Hebrew together. Um, God says, for signs, for seasons, 
The signs in Hebrew is the word ot, and it means that God uses the sun, the moon, and the stars for his signs, for his seasons. In Hebrew, it's moadim, signs for his fixed appointed times. That's what it's speaking about, the feast of the Lord. Yes. Leviticus 23, verse 2. So God, they're not signs that, uh, that you know, the, the rapture or anything like that. It's not what the Bible says. Although we know that in the feast of the Lord, there are multiple fulfillments pointing to the second coming of Yeshua. That's right. But we have to be careful not to take that out of context and, and twist it around to, to something that sounds different. So we have to be very clear what the Bible says in context. No, you you are exactly right, Zev, and listen, I, I tend to be a person that believes that somehow the last three feasts of the Lord will have to be perfectly fulfilled through the second coming, God's judgment on the earth, the millennial reign, etc., but that doesn't mean that every year on the Feast of Trumpets that we need to run up to a mountaintop expecting to be raptured. Absolutely, because we need to understand that it... it it's going to happen with the sound of the trump. We meet the Lord in the air and go home. However, we need to understand that in the feast of the Lord are multiple fulfillments pointing to the second coming of Jesus, Yeshua, just like the seven trumpets in Revelation don't blow at one time. So in the feast, they don't blow at one time. It's very important to understand that, not to look at the physical realm, but to look at the spiritual realm in order to understand what God is saying. Yeah, and, and Zev, we've only got a few minutes left, but, but I've got to ask you this, because you just said it, you know, the last trump. Paul uses that language in the New Testament uh, to tell us uh, of things that will happen. And uh, speaking of the rapture, that's where we get our interpretation of the rapture from in our English Bibles. And he says at the last trump. Now there's a big teaching in the church. Means, is the last trumpet on the feast of trumpets, on the blowing of the trumpets, on the second day. Now can you tell us from a Hebraic mindset what is wrong with that thinking? The Bible doesn't say it's the second day. That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> but besides that, we need to understand again, and I have a whole teaching on this. Yes, it's going to happen prophetically in the Feast of Trumpets. However, we need to understand that there are multiple fulfillments, meaning we don't know the time or the season. It doesn't mean it's going to happen on the Feast. It means it's going to happen prophetically through the Feast that's so right. we'll be ready. That's, that, that's right. That's a big difference. Otherwise, you and I can speculate. Jesus didn't come this year. we got 12 months. That's right, and we we just keep setting dates for for next year for the Feast of Trumpets, and then it's going to be next year for the Feast of Trumpets. That's what the Jews do. They 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 don't keep war. The Day of Atonement. They can fast one day. They sin for twelve months. Next year they do it again. Yes, that's, yes. That's a contradiction to the Word of God. Yeah, and, and I just want to be very specific for for to to our listeners that may not know about what you said about the Bible says that there's not two days. If if our readers would go to Leviticus or our listeners would go to Leviticus twenty three, you would see that the prescri- the prescribed feast of trumpets is one day, and the Bible doesn't even give us specific instructions on how many trumpets were to be blown in that one day. It just says celebrate this day with the blowing of trumpets. And so later in history, the rabbis revised the Feast of Trumpets, and Zev, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, they have extended that now to a two-day celebration with a prescribed number of trumpets and with a, with a single trumpet blast to be blown to, to culminate, to end the feast on the second day. That's true, because we need to understand we're reading the Bible and they're reading the Bible, but we have something they don't have. It's called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you begin to take the idioms of the feast and add religion to them. And that's what they did, and I say it over and over. We're not to follow the rabbis. We're to follow only Yeshua HaMashiach and the written Word of God in context. That's exactly right. So just want people to know, if you have, if you have heard that teaching about the prescribed number of trumpets to be blown and the last trump on the second day of the Feast of Trumpets and, and that this has to be the timing of the rapture because Paul says it's the last trump, that's not in the Bible. You're hearing it from a man who speaks Hebrew. It is his native language. The Bible specifically says that it is a one-day celebration for the blowing of trumpets, and that's it. That's true, and that's true. And also, I want to, one thing I want to bring out, I know we're kind of pressed for time, is everybody wants Jesus to return. I want to go home tomorrow. I want to go home today. Thank you. But it's going to be his timing. It's not going to be in our timing. We are not to speculate. I'll say it over and over again. The problem that I see, there are a lot of people out there giving dates. And when the date gets near, they start to switch their message around and say, oh, I didn't really say that, I didn't say date. But what you said is on the Internet. And That's somebody right. already downloaded and pulled it off the Internet. 
And you can compare what you said last month to this month. And that's the one of the signs of false prophets in the end times that they set a date, and when the date gets near, they try to switch their message around. No, you, problem is what they said last month on the internet. You are right, brother. And listen, it is so important that we watch for these false prophets because Jesus took time to warn us twice in Matthew 24. Zev, you got about 15 seconds, brother. Just tell the folks where they can find you. Messiahofisraelministries.org.net.com, or you can just Google my name, Messianic Rabbi Zev Forat. Or go to carlgallus.com. We're working together in ministry. You'll find me there. And his uh, ministry is also on my website. Uh, this is the one new man. We're glad to advance the kingdom of Yeshua together. And uh, I encourage you to sign up to get our newsletter. If you want to support us, support us. Send your prayer request and we pray in Jerusalem. And let's just bring the gospel back and go home. And let's not worry about the time. Let's worry about the season. Great words, Zev. Thank you so much for being with us today, brother. We love you, and we look forward to having you back next time. We'll be back right on the other side of this break.